What is up, guys? This is Tristan, aka Young Pressure. Today, I'm with David right here, and we are going over a door to door absolute masterclass for free, free game. This is going into extreme detail. He made more than five figures, but less than a Tesla. We'll get to that in a quick second, but we're going into detail on exactly how you can do it and you can reciprocate these things into your marketing tactics. David, it's a pleasure to have you on here. What's up, dude? First of all, Tristan, I want to say it's an honor to be on here with another fellow hard worker, um, ready to provide some value today that I've learned and am still learning. Absolutely, dude. So let's just dive deep into it. Okay, so door knocking. What are your thoughts on it? Uh, it's, not a, it's not a thing that everybody likes to do. I mean, nobody really wants to go up to somebody's house and really have to knock on their door and <laughs> bother somebody, per se. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's a skill that if you learn, you can really master and make a lot of money. It's like with sales, you know, so I, I love it. I mean, there's times where it sucks but I really love the skill set that it gives you. Yeah, and we'll go into the mentality of things just in a quick second, but let's go through step one. How are you prepping yourself to go and absolutely door knock stuff? Because I know some people are like fearful of this yeah. stuff. How do you prep yourself for that? So I was definitely fearful. I remember the first house that I was going to, I walked around it maybe a couple of times and had to psych myself into it. But uh, just like football, it's obviously not the same, but the adrenaline rush that you kind of get from whatever sport it is that you're about to play when you're about to go into a big game, you get nervous because you think you're going to mess up, you think you're going to stutter or whatever. But it's just a, if I don't do it, somebody else will mentality. Like you just have to go and approach the door and stu start, stuff will start to flow. Are there specific things that you do to prep yourself up? Like I remember playing baseball and having to eat the specific sandwich right before a game. And yeah. it would ultimately lead me to a success. Maybe it was like a placebo of some sort, but <laughs> yeah. uh, do you do anything like that? Um, if anything, I just go over my pitch. I try to give myself different scenarios of what the person might say, if it's like a yes or a no. As I'm walking up towards the neighborhood or the, as I'm walking up towards the neighborhood or like the door or anything, I try to prepare myself and make sure I know what my pitch is, know what I'm going to be talking about, know what different objections that I might get, even though you never truly know, yeah. but just how to get over the most common ones. Right. And so you're prepping yourself up just for all those objections, all those things. Yeah. And let's go into step two of this. All right. So step two, you prep yourself up mentally. You're, you're ready to go. Mm -hmm. When you're approaching the door, what are you looking for? And how are you about, how are you going about that? Of course. Uh, so when I was working with Vivint, one thing we would check to see if, is if they had like a doorbell camera or any cameras around their house so that we can talk about it, talk about how we offer better services basically, but just making sure that if they have something, we address it before they do. Cause half the time they will address it and kick you off of their doorstep. Right. When I was doing pressure washing with you, as I still am, mm -hmm. what we do is we try to make sure that we see if there's any uh, dirt built up on the house or if there's anything that we can possibly talk about that the customer may not be aware of. So that's also another prep that we most definitely get going. Right, so you're looking at the external environment and seeing what is the issue at hand, and yep. then we're gonna be able to address that with the customer as well. Exactly. Are you looking for other things like LSU flags or something that you could relate to someone yep. with that? If you could talk about that. Yeah, so uh, I've seen a lot of really cool cars when I was doing door-to-door. -door. Yeah. So I would talk about their cars. I would talk about, like you said, the LSU flags. Any flags that shows their alma mater, you bring that up. It, it breaks down their barriers, first of all, because they see, oh, he actually cares enough to even notice this type of stuff and isn't just trying to sell me right away. Mm -hmm. Talk about anything that intrigues you um, that you can build a conversation off of with the customer before you get into selling them. Right. Awesome. Okay, so one – you're prepping yourself up too. You're going to the, the door, but you're looking at everything and you're exactly. ex examining the things that you could start to talk about. Yeah. Three, how are you like door knocking? Is there like <laughs> specific stuff that we need to know? Is it like, what are you doing? So when I door knock, normally I give them like 20 seconds. And if I get no response, then I'm like, okay. And especially if there's cars in the driveway, I'm like, okay, well, they just don't want to speak to me. You'll see people peeking and stuff like that. <laughs> but um, you want to look relaxed. You don't want to be standing there smiling and stuff, looking like a salesman, because first and foremost, you're a random person at their door. You have to look somewhat relaxed. It, that was the most ridiculous thing I ever, heard, I ever heard when I first started, but it makes such an impact because if you're relaxed, the homeowner isn't as tense and they're normally chill because it's their house. Right. But when they see somebody standing up straight right there, uh, looking at them, staring at them in their <laughs> eyes, the moment that they get up to their door, they're not going to want to answer the door in the first place. Yeah. So a relaxed uh, positioning whenever they open up the door and uh, yeah, giving them some space too. Don't be all up on the door, like back up so that you can actually mm. give them space to analyze you and see what you're there for. What does a relaxed position look like? So I would lean up against like the wall. It depends on whatever their house structure is. I would lean up against the wall and act like I'm on my phone checking different updates. So like making it look like I'm busy. 
that I don't have time to, to just sit there and talk with them all day. You want to make it look like you're busy so that when they come outside, they see, oh, this is a busy guy. <laughs> he means business. He's going to be able to talk to me and stuff like that. And you're not just somebody standing there looking like a dweeb. Right. <laughs> like a dweeb. <laughs> what are you wearing? Like, is there specific uh, clothing that you have to wear for this? And then what have you noticed within that and the results that you've seen? Um, is you most definitely want to rep whatever you're working for or whatever your company is. It makes you look more credible. If you just go there with a t-shirt and some shorts or whatever, the chances of them opening the door are less likely than if you have a company you're wearing. Right. Um, so most definitely the, whatever your logo is, whatever your company gear is, wear that for sure. But you know, sometimes they'll open up the door for a pair of sh uh, a shirt and some pants. If you could talk really well, no, that's facts. It's facts. So let's get into the talking portion of the step four. Boom. Say I'm a customer. Yeah. Do, 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 and I peek my head out <laughs> <laughs> and I'm saying, you know, what's up? Like, you know, who are you? What's your pitch look like? And how are you those first three words, those first three sentences? What are they and how can you get them engaged? So the first thing I'm saying is good morning, good afternoon, whatever it is. I know I'm the last person you want to see right now. And then I'm getting into my name, the company that I work for. And then I'm asking them a couple questions based off of stuff that I've noticed around the house or, uh, Say if we're doing solar, you're asking them about their energy bill. They may not want to hear about, they may not want to even get into personal details about the energy bill, but you're asking them questions that gets them to say, yes, I'm sure you don't like spending too much money on an energy bill, right? Yes. That's the first yes. Whatever it is that you're selling, get them into a yes saying mood because then that just sets the tone for the rest of the sale. But the I'm sorry to bother you breaks down the barrier every time because it's like they either say, oh, no, you're fine. And then, you yeah. know, they're chill yeah. or they're like they'll laugh about it. And, you know, so you're pre-qualifying these people with this saying, right? Yes, so exactly. It's like you're pre-qualifying like, hey, I know I'm the last person you want to see right yeah. now or something like that to break the ice mm -hmm. so that you can get, hook them and engage them. Exactly. Right? So I look at it from like a virality perspective, like it's like a TikTok, and you walk up and you're like. I got to hook these guys. Yep. I got to break the ice quickly. Exactly. You know? And so doing these things, then you're able to break the ice so that they can engage in the conversation, at least give you at least like 10 more seconds. Right. Yeah. So that's the biggest thing is like elongating this durated time for them to talk. Yeah. Okay, cool. I'm just recapping everything that I, I, I see. Oop. Uh, that's, that's fine. It's, it went off. Quick second. Okay. So, pitch how are you getting them to like close like how are you selling this stuff so um after asking them a couple questions making sure that i build rapport with them and see exactly what their problem is and how i can fix it or what they would even be interested in seeing i'm doing a walkthrough normally so when i was with vivant what we would do is we'd walk them around the house let them see different areas where we could put cameras or on the inside of the house making them visualize exactly what it is that we're going to do for them you visualize you build that value you solve a problem that they have they will literally let you close them, sit down at their table, take a piece of paper or your iPad and show them all the prices that you have to offer. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, <clears throat> so are you holding like a book, a, a pamphlet of anything like that? So that yeah. you, you have a handheld thing because I've seen that a lot of people, if you give them an item of some sort, it actually increases the closing percentage a little bit. Yeah. Are you giving them something regarding of that? Um, so I normally have a pamphlet with me. Yeah. My boss didn't like that when I was working with Vivian. Yeah. Um, but I would normally give them a pamphlet so that they can look through it as well. And just in case I don't close the sale, they at least were able to go through every single thing and they have the price in the pamphlet. They're able to see exactly what the products are. And I leave them with something so they at least remember me unless they yeah. throw it away or something. What's a piece of advice you would give to these guys to if they're struggling with door-to-door -door sales and they get past the first four steps, like they prep themselves up, they... Mm -hmm. They go up to the door, they knock on it, and then that fourth step, like they get them hooked, but they can't close. What would you do? Like if you're fighting an objection or something like that, mm -hmm. how do you handle that? And what would be a piece of advice for them to increase their closing percentage with this? Well, one thing I had to learn was don't let objections stop you from trying to get the sale. I mean, they're going to say that I need to talk to my wife or my husband or I need time to think about this. Most of the, t most of the time, is you didn't provide enough value if they need to think about it extra because if somebody finds it valuable, they'll buy on the spot. Mm. But uh, don't let objections stop you from trying to get the sale. You have to literally stay there and try to dig into it until they kick you off of their porch, <laughs> literally. And I had to learn that as cringe as it was for me when I first started. Yeah. That's what you have to do because people – you can influence somebody to make a purchase if they really see the value in it. Mm. And a lot of people give up after that first no. Yeah. And then somebody else comes in and sells them. So it's like, you know. Define value. Um, anything, that makes them, anything that makes them think that this purchase is worth it. Mm. I 
like that. So if you can give me an example, mm-hmm. say if we're selling gutter cleaning, pressure washing, what would you give an example for that? And how can you provide value in that sense? So the walkthrough, let them see exactly what it is that they have and what we've done for other people. Mm. Provide that value through the visuals. I mean, for a business like that, you will more than likely have visuals to show the previous work that you've done. Yeah. Let them see what you can do. Also, give it to them for free. Let them see the service that you can provide to them. If you can go and clean gutters exceptionally well, go and do it for free. So give them a demo, like you would say. Yeah. Let them see exactly what it is that you can do for them and show them videos and pictures and let them say, okay, this is 100% legit. I can trust this guy. Mm, so it's like sparking ideas. I'm just thinking aloud right now. So say if you like brought an iPad with you too and you can show before afters of this stuff yeah. and then offer a free demo to just, just something small that'll take literally two minutes, yeah. right? Then that closing percentage goes out the roof because you're able to offer something for free mm-hmm. and they're able to see the con- the contrast between before and after already exactly. as well. And then you can build value in the sense of not only is it going to do this, but it's going to help elongate the life of the property. It's yep. going to help do all the other things, right? Exactly. And then you're able to close much faster, right? So yep. if you're struggling within that, right, offer something, offer an incentive. I know Alex Ramosi just released his new book, $100 million leads, and he talks about lead magnets. And this is a lead magnet that you can use. As in basically offering something for free, something that's going to take a minute amount of your time, and then it'll ultimately lead to the closing percentage increasingly. All right? Yep. Yeah. So awesome. So that's how you could do it. Now, the fifth portion of this, Mm -hmm. closing it, right? Like you get them them to sell. How are you leaving the conversation? So we get the sale. I normally would leave them with my personal number and say, if you guys have any questions or if there's anything that comes up, please, please feel free to reach out to me. The very next day after I leave, I come back and I check on with the customer, make sure that they're satisfied, make sure that everything is working perfectly fine because you don't want to just leave them with wondering whether or not you'll actually own up to giving them their number and actually saying they can reach out to you. I'm leaving the, I'm leaving it with uh, referrals as well. I'm letting them know, Hey, if you guys are satisfied with the stuff that we've been able to give you, Please feel free to at least leave us a, re- a review or a referral. Give us a review. Let us see exactly how you were satisfied with our product. And if they know of somebody that might benefit as well, you're giving them a referral and you're telling them, hey, we can, you know, give you That's something. That's brilliant because then that builds rapport with not just you, but it builds the rapport as a totality of the company as well. Yeah. And so whenever you can go back and just be like, hey, is everything good? everything's cool. Yeah. Then it gives them like that sense of like, Oh wow. Like I want to refer this guy. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? He actually cares. And just, he actually cares and he's willing to show up in person yeah. to make sure that the job was done. Mm-hmm. Cause I see a lot of people, they do this snake oil stuff where it's like they close the job, they do the job and they never reach back to the customer. That's the worst thing that you could possibly do. Yeah, exactly. It's literally like part of your family now. And whenever you can, obtain these things Mm -hmm. then you it's free marketing to other upsells it is you know yeah yeah so let's regurgitate everything back to these guys if they missed anything (laughs) because i know this is a lot of value for you guys so one you mentally approach yourself like you mentally prep yourself up two you're approaching the door you're looking at everything three is you door knock in a relaxed position yes sir four is you engage them with a hook boom so they're now attentive right it's like Mm -hmm. a TikTok. Five, you can close it. You can do a lead magnet in some sort to make sure that you get the close. Yeah. And then five, follow up with them. Make sure everything's right. Did I get that right? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome, dude. Mentality. Let's talk about mentality. Okay. And we'll get to in a quick second, like how much this guy made. Like I said, it's more than five figures, but less than a Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> Man, and, I wish. <laughs> and, but mentality wise, what does it take? Like, I know, like, if you can just describe the scenery, mm-hmm. what you were at, Dude. and and what does it actually take? Uh, it takes a will to just want more for yourself. That's really all I can really say about it, bro. Like, when I first got dropped off at my very first time going to door knocking, this was in Jacksonville, Florida. The weather's already insane there. It rains all the time. Pouring down rain. I got dropped off in this crazy-looking neighborhood, bro. The craziest neighborhood I've ever seen in my life. Um... I had to step out into the thing. I had my umbrella on, step out, walked right into a puddle, bro. Was like, oh my gosh, like, am I really about to do this? Like, do I, is this something I really want to do? But I had to say, you know what? I have to get this done. I've had my, I gave them my word that I'm going to get this done. And, uh, I've never backed down from anything hard. We've done a lot of hard stuff. So went up to the door, sold them the pitch, didn't get the deal, 
But I, I, after that first time of going through and talking to somebody and seeing how they were actually engaged through me just practicing my pitch and stuff like that, I was like, okay, I could do this. Yeah, and it's like – I think when you kind of regurgitate back, it's like we've been through a lot of stuff yeah. and you got to go through like that fire. You've got to go through that chaos. You do. And in order, like if that's, if this is the worst thing that could possibly happen to me that I have to go door <laughs> knock, that's, you know, it's, it's probably not. It's <laughs> a blessing. Probably, you know, that's the worst thing. It's a blessing. And, yeah. and I think that's how you can approach it is like, this is a blessing to be able to do something like this because I've gone through a lot of chaotic situations beforehand. I've mm-hmm. gone through the fire. I've gone through the hell yeah. and I've, challenged myself a ton more beforehand and this is just something completely minute compared to all that right so i'm telling and you man. It's, it, you've got to experience something like that and i know everyone has probably experienced some type of doubt some type of just chaotic situation that they've occurred mm-hmm. and you can utilize that into your advantage into this stuff and you and envision this as a blessing you most definitely right? can bro because everybody's been through something different mm-hmm. This shouldn't be the thing that stops you from your greatness, you know? Yeah. It's just going up to somebody and talking to somebody. People talk to people all the time when they're out and about. Why not just go and try to at least build up your skills to be able to speak and go and try to make some money? This is You're blessed if you're even able to sell a product that you can just go to somebody's house and try to convince them on, you know? It's facts. Fact. And I see even it as a bigger opportunity today because not many people are actually doing this. Yeah, exactly. A lot of people don't know how to approach people. A lot of people don't know how to talk to people. So when you can do this effectively, you don't stutter. You look at them in the eye with great body, uh, body posture. Yeah. Dude, it's like limitless opportunity. It Literally is. limitless opportunity because no one else wants to do it. And you could be the guy to do it. Yeah, it makes <laughs> some really good money. More so money than most people. Let's talk about that, right? Before, if, before we start this, if you guys can hit that subscribe button, we a ton of value lately. Um, this is just free game, free value for anyone. I want to make this accessible for everyone. And uh, David, let's get right into it. Okay. So let's break it down. This was your first month door knocking, right? Yeah. Very first. Yeah. And (laughs) this is a pretty impressive, like I said, it's more than five figures, but less than a Tesla. And if we can just go about it, like let's go week to week and then in totality, right? If you can remember those things. (sighs) Okay. Yeah, I could try to. So week to week, how'd it go? How long were you there? And then give us the the grand total after. So I was there. I left June 11th and uh, came back. I think it was like January or no, July, July. It's like that first week of July. Yeah, yeah, probably around the first week. And uh, dude, I made more money in that time frame than I ever have in my life. The first week was tough. Um, I was selling... I was selling a lot of like doorbell cameras and different cameras around the house, but solar was a little bit harder to sell. Um, I'm not even the solar guy myself, so we would have the solar guys come in, but dude, it was raining and pouring. Nobody really wanted to talk about solar, so it was just straight security cameras. It made the most sense. Yeah. Um, I don't remember how much I did that first week, but I made enough money to where it was like, okay, I can really do this and like do this for a long period of time. I feel like I, I feel like I'm good at it. I'm at the height of it. I'm like, okay, I can really do this. Mm. Um, I made a couple thousand my first week, and uh, I think I made about fifteen fifteen hundred off of solo that first week. Yeah. yeah. So what about like the rest of the weeks? Like, go about it. Yeah. Ooh, the rest of the weeks. Describe the scenarios and how you were able to accumulate. It, it. got crazier as I like went out throughout different neighborhoods. The first week was that first neighborhood that I was telling you about craziest stuff ever but people when they see the value it doesn't matter what type of house they live in they will pay for it and so i started making a couple thousand a week um to where it grand totaled out to fourteen thousand six hundred dollars for that whole first month and that was more money than i ever made in a single month plus the five thousand i'm getting from solar bro once it gets installed which, <laughs> that's insane money to me bro right and i didn't even have to close a solar yeah so yeah. that's like you know that's damn near twenty thousand dollars which is fabulous I you know, know and it's bro. like it shows the power of what this can do mm-hmm. it shows the power of like this is tangible for anyone it is you know and and it it shows that if you're willing to put the hard work in that you could get it right and it's like this is your first month ever doing it <laughs> crazy right? bro. and it's like twenty thousand dollars right yeah. and a lot of people on here they can't even envision themselves doing that right so <laughs> what is the hump for them to get over that like, what is the hump to get them over $5,000 in door knocking and then propel themselves past $15,000 in door knocking? Dude, practice. I was blessed with some really good roommates, like some guys that were killing it as well. They're from Wisconsin. 
they would always preach practice. All the top guys, they would say, practice it with your roommates. Practice it with your, the guy that's in charge, our manager. Practice it and just practice it until you can't get it wrong. I even heard that from a sales guy after I was done with it. Practice until you can't get it wrong to where you're not as nervous and stuttering. And, bro, with the more practice you get, the easier the hump will become. I mean, you're not going to mess up. You're not going to be stuttering. You may mess up a couple times, but you're going to be so convicted in what it is that you're selling that it's almost impossible for you to not get over that $5,000 hump. So what about, like, past $10,000, right? Dude, like, it's, what the is, it's the same. Repetitions. Right, repetitions. I, they talked about Kobe Bryant and uh, how he would continue to get repetitions, even though he was already great. He would continue to get repetitions because it's a never-ending learning process. Mm. The more you practice, the better you get. That 5000 as soon as you make it to five, you realize, I can make it to 10000 yeah. If I was able to do that, which was already unattainable in my mind, the more I practice, the, more, the higher the bar gets set, and then I'm able to reach my goals, which – it's, it's crazy how it's so cliche, but it works. It's brilliant because I believe if you can do one thing once, you could probably do it 10 times. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like if you yeah. even just get $1,000 in door knocking, you could probably get 10000 truthfully. And if you could – it just accumulates. It's the law of compounding, right? So get to 1000 get to 2000 Like challenge yourself to beat the next guy. And the yeah. next guy is just you, yeah, right? Exactly. Don't compare yourself to the ultimate – uh, top salesman out there, right? It's it's easy to do that. It but is. if you can just beat yourself the next month, the next week, the next day, it's going to be ultimately so much easier to compound. Yeah, right. I agree. And it, it's let's talk about like rejections, right? Because I'm assuming you probably got a ton of rejections, <sighs> bro. So many, bro. Right. Oh my and gosh. like mentality wise, how do you uh, like just put it as a grain of salt and just keep going? And then what do you say during that? Um, you, you have no choice but to keep moving. I mean, it's like when you get rejected by a girl, you're not going to stop talking to girls for the rest of your life. You get a no, you just learn how to deal with it and learn how to fight around it. Because like I said, you stay until they kick you off their porch or they close the door in your face. So you're constantly battling objections. You're fighting through it. Um, making it hard for them to say no continuously because they're going to continue to say no if they don't see the value in it or if they, they don't, if they don't see how they can benefit from it. So it's just continuing to fight through it and push through. <clears throat> it's funny you say that, man. It's because <laughs> you can refer this to everything, literally like the girl thing. But I think the best thing is within like rejection and everything like that mm -hmm. is I remember, and I'm just going to tell like a brief story. It was like this fine girl and I went in for the kiss. I was going for the move <laughs> and I got rejected. Like it was like, that was like a, it was a, it was a great occurrence for me. But at the same time I go back home and I'm like, at least I did it, right? Like, at least I, I felt fulfilled. At least I gave it a shot. At least you know. Right, at least you know. Yeah. And in the sense of that, it's like, look forward to the no's. Like, try to go out there and be like, dude, I'm going to go and get 50 no's today, <laughs> right? And, like, ultimately, like, that'll lead you to at least one yes. And that, yeah. could, that one yes could change your life. It could. It really mm -hmm. can. You're going to get a bunch of no's before you get a yes. Mm -hmm. That's just how sales is. That's how anything is. So. Yeah. Yeah, you most definitely should look forward to uh, yeses, but you will get a lot of no's, and it's going to make you better yeah. along the way. $20,000, bro. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> crazy money, bro. I never, ever thought that that – I had to change my mindset, obviously, but I never thought it would be attainable. But when you learn skills that make you that type of money, bro, <laughs> it's like the sky's the limit at that point. What are some skills? How like, to speak – Yeah, give it to the audience. How to talk to people. Um Learning how to effectively communicate whatever point it is without stuttering all the doggone time because people aren't going to take you as seriously if you can't get your or articulate your thoughts and get it out fast enough. People's attention spans are extremely short. So if you learn how to speak, you learn how to study exactly what it is that you're selling, you become a master at just sales, learning different sales um, methods, anything that you could possibly get your hands on. Dude, that right there in itself will make you – because life is nothing but sales. Yeah. That right there will make you a mastermind with being able to get what you want. Yeah, that's facts. That's really good. And I believe, like, the more skills that you can acquire, it's – and the ability to acquire skills actually occurs through, like, putting you, yourself in these very uncomfortable situations, oh, right? Yeah. You can purchase a course. You can do all that stuff, but you're not ultimately going to actually receive the skills mm -hmm. until you put yourself into a very uncomfortable position. It's like a game, bro. You can practice the play over and over and over again until you see different defense. Yeah. And then it's like, how are you going to adjust then? Exactly. So. Like, you can run you – can, you can purchase a course and look at all the routes that they do. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that you can do it. You, you've just got to go out there and put in the work. Yes, you do. You know do. what I'm saying? And then you're going to be able to acquire the skills to run a route perfectly. Yeah. It's the same way within 
door knocking, all this stuff. It is. You know? Practice makes perfect. Practice makes perfect. Let's, uh, okay, so this was our TikTok one. This was like our door knocking like masterclass. If you want to just stay tuned, we're going to talk like mentality of stuff on just how to achieve and make more money in general. So guys, bear with me. Let's get into it. Okay, so David, who are you? My name is David, <laughs> uh, 23 years old. I played football and now I'm a salesman. Um, I'm a hustler, a go-getter. I'm trying to make it in any possible way that I can and I will because I'm learning all these different skills that is pushing my career further than I ever thought, bro. Never thought I would be doing sales, thought I'd be playing football, but now I'm here and I'm blessed. I like how you said I will, right? You know, it's like, it's like I hope, I may be, but I will do this. Yeah. You know, it's like I'm going to do this. And I believe it was like Muhammad Ali said this. I'm just going to paraphrase it. It was like I was the best before I even knew I was, right? Yeah. It, was like, it was like before I actually was, like I knew it. And so like if you have that belief system of like I am going to be great, mm-hmm. how can you affirm that belief system? How can you actually – be and, and mutate these this belief system to be strong uh actions i mean alex Ramosi said it you say it, bro I, I look up to you a lot I, like i like i said i appreciate you for having me on here stacking up those undeniable truths bro that you actually were able to do these types of yeah. things so that whenever you say I, I will do something you already have proof behind it so you're not just saying it and screaming out affirmations that absolutely mean nothing if you're not putting in the work in because <laughs> a guy can lay in bed all day and say that and not accomplish anything so it's uh the quote is and first of all i really appreciate that but the the quote is you know you don't become confident by shouting affirmations in the mirror but by having a stack of undeniable proof that you are who you say you are exactly you know and you accumulate these skills and then you can get more skills and you can accumulate uh, a one thousand dollar sale and i can accumulate more thousand yeah. dollars uh sales it's like slaying one dragon and then you can just slay the other dragon it's yeah. like you slay this big dragon at first and then you can just keep slaying them then you, know? you can shout out all the affirmations you want at that point. <laughs> so, cause you can actually make it happen. So <laughs> it's facts, dude. It's like the belief system so strong. I believe it's like the biggest power that someone can contain. Yeah. And like, if you have a full will of like, I can do this, even if I'm not there yet, I can do this. Mm-hmm. What are some other things that like can allow you to propel yourself into like, I, I know that I can do this. Um, let's see. So after you already stack up the actions and shown that you can do it, repetition like i said until you can't get it wrong Mm. once you it's like stuck in your head to where you really can't mess up that's when you're like okay like that's another thing that i could add on to the fact of that i can do it you know Mm. so yeah repetition once you practice it so long it's like football running that route once you practice running a dig so many times and you become a master at it that's when you could be like okay so it's 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 funny you say this and i'm just going to regurgitate it back right it's like the chaos the like the worst times ultimately like net the best profit right yeah. and it's like could you talk about how that has basically conformed you mm-hmm. into who you are and how you're able to you know establish a, a huge belief system in yourself it uh it plays on your mental when you go through hard times or stuff that you would consider to be hard it shows you who you are because then you really have to just dig deep and decide either you're, you're going to get it done or you're going to let it conquer. You're going to be thinking about it when you go home, just like training, how we would go training. And they'd be like, if you gave it your all, you'll be able to go home and not have to dwell on the past or anything like that. But if you're lollygagging, you're not going to be able to build up that mindset and that durability to be like, okay, I've endured something tough like this before. This is something that I can easily get through. And at the end, I'll be victorious about it. Do you have a story? Dude, I have a couple stories, actually. <laughs> we would, uh, and this, this relates to us. Dude, like, we would uh, run 400s all the time in the summertime when it was hot, bro. 400s. Then we would go straight into sprints. We'd work on speed, hills, 60 hills. Bro, that sounds unrealistic to a lot of people. People aren't used to doing that type of stuff, especially after 400s. Mm-hmm. And then we would go to Subway for a little bit. we think we were chilling. Then we would come back and play a football game, bro. Bernard, he's implemented such a mindset into me. And I'm pretty sure you as well, bro, that it's like we've, been, we've done so much unnormal stuff to the point where we can do anything that we put our mind to, whether it's sales, whether it's uncomfortable positions, talking to customers and having to fight over objections. Dude, like this is nothing compared to what we've done because nobody's really ran 60 hills after 400s, bro. I don't, you you got to show me a person that has done that, bro. It's, I, I use this, this quote a lot. It's like success isn't guaranteed um, and 
I, I, let me rephrase this. Hard work doesn't guarantee success, but success is not tangible without it. Yeah. Right. And it's like this unknown and you don't know if this stuff is going to work, but it's the only way to make it work. Yeah. You know, it's the only way to, to make it work because if you don't do it, you're never going to know. <laughs> right. And it's like through these chaos and, and through this, like just fire, I think you really find out who you, you truly are in this, in these senses, you do, you know, and, and then ultimately like this stuff just makes it easy. And, it and for guys that don't know who Bernard is, <laughs> <laughs> he's a, uh, he's a crazy man. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, no. he's a G bro. He's yeah, a G. He's, he's a dog. He's a G. He's, he's, he's one of our mentors. And, uh, he, it was just going through chaos with him. Right. And, and he put us through a lot of stuff to callous our brain at a very early age. And ultimately like it, it reaps what it sows. Right. So it's like, you, you got to find some people like that. And can you talk about like your circle? Yeah. How, how is that a big play for you? Well, I love being around people that have been through some, something that's hard. Um, because then they get me to an extent because if you're around a whole bunch of weak people that just want to sit around all day and don't want to really accomplish anything, you're really not going to be motivated and motivation is a whole different subject, but you're not really going to want to do those other things that you see other people doing because you're around losers. Um, I surround myself around people that are trying to win or actively trying to pursue something because I know, and it sounds so cliche, but you're a product of the people that you surround yourself with, yeah. which is crazy because a lot of people think, oh, no, nah, I'm, I'm good. I don't need to be around other winners, but it plays an important role in your thought process. How can you find these people? <sighs> and at what characteristics do you look into these people so that you know, like, hey, I want to stick to this guy? Hardworking. They're not making up a whole bunch of excuses as to why they can't get things done. They're not complaining about situations because there's people in a lot worse situations. We're in America. Yeah. Like, come on, bro. There's people out of the country that are really struggling. Um, they're not complaining. They're continuously working. They're not staying inside playing video games all day. Like, we're, we're grown now. We don't have time for that. <laughs> um, you can find a lot of people on discords. I, I've found some people through discords, um, through different sales jobs. If you're blessed enough through training sessions, like if you're younger or if you go to a gym or something like that, you'll be able to find somebody that at least – is uh, driven and you can speak to. Hopefully you got a ton of value out of this because we went, we went into like literal detail on how to do it, how to door knock, how to make literally $20,000 in a month, how you can do it, and how it's tangible to the pressure washing gutter cleaning business or whatever service you're in. It's all the same. Yeah. And David, I can't thank you enough for like literally just handing all this stuff for free. Cause of course, could, of course. Cause you could literally, like people could pay you to, to just talk. And pleasure, bro. For you, I'll hop on here and give any free advice, bro, because yeah. you, you played a big part of my life, and I appreciate you. Yeah, man, and same thing, right? And it's, it's going to be awesome. I'm going to get him back on here in about a month or, or by the end of the year. We're going to do some Christmas lights. Hey, so. tune in for that. It's going to yeah. be crazy. We've got some big goals. Yes, so, sir. Uh, but, David, one hack, one piece of advice to just kind of close things off for these guys, and what would you give them? Uh... Stop making excuses, and if you don't do it, somebody else will. And you have to really take that, not with a grain of salt, but if you don't do whatever it is that you plan on doing, the dreams that you have, the sale, uh, the door knocking, somebody else is going to come and steal that from you, and <laughs> you'll be very sick. So stop limiting yourself. Um, eliminate limiting beliefs because, bro, you can make as much money as you can possibly put your mind to. So eliminate limiting, limiting beliefs and Go and do whatever it is that you feel like you have to do because you never know the outcome that will come from it. That's David. Guys, uh, smash the subscribe button. We're going to get out of here. Much love. David, I yes, appreciate sir. you, my guy. Appreciate you. And I'll attach this stuff on uh, in the description. But, guys, y'all have a great day. Peace.